In this video, I'm going to show you how to model your logo project. So the first step is to be in the folder that um, for your class. So right here, I'm in Manufacturing 1. Then you're going to want to go into your CNC Million folder that you created. And you're going to go up to this top left where it says Create. Hit that blue button, then hit Document. Here you can name it whatever you want. So you can do Logo Project and then your name. Hit Create. And this is how we're going to create a new document. So this is going to be the first step for any of the CAD models that we create. So now that we have our document here, you can see we've got this toolbar up at the top. And we have also have this menu at the left. So first thing we want to do is we want to create a sketch. That's kind of how you're going to start every single model. Now when you're creating a sketch, every time you first create a sketch, you want to select a plane that that sketch is going to be on. So in our instance, typically everything we do in this class, we're going to start from the top plane. Um, but that could be different whatever, depending on what you're modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this top plane. That's going to create this first sketch on that top plane. Now there's a couple things we can do to kind of make this whole overall experience a little bit easier. So if you press P on your keyboard, that's going to get rid of those planes so that you can see a little bit better. And then if you press N that's going to normalize it so that it's flat and you're working in a 2D area. So for our logo project, we know it's going to be a 3x3 three three block, an uh, inch and a half tall. So we want to start with our block here. We're just going to use this corner rectangle tool up at the top. Click on that. Then go ahead and just click on the origin point in the center here and drag a box. Once you get it close to 3x3, three three, it doesn't really matter, just click again and then you can type three enter three enter that's going to dimension this to be three inches by three inches now if you accidentally pressed enter before you got the number you wanted don't worry about it let's say you're missing a dimension you're going to press either D on your keyboard or go up here to the dimension button and then now we can click on this line and dimension that to three inches so now we've got our three by three block we can go ahead and finish our sketch there so we're going to hit this green check mark that's going to end our sketch. So now we need to get our block that our logo is going to go on. So we're going to use what's called extrude. And you're going to click extrude, click on your box, and then that's going to extrude a shape. So for this one, we want it to be one inch tall, and then we're going to extrude our logo an extra half inch to get us that full inch and a half. So it should already be default at one inch. If it's not, go ahead and change this number right here, and then you can just hit the green check mark. Now that we have our box created, we're going to do another sketch on this top face here. So now we're sketching on this top face, we want to insert our image. So first thing we want to do is we're going to go to Google, find an image that you like, and then you can either right click, save image as, save that to your downloads, make sure it's either a JPEG or a PNG, and if it's not saving as either one of those, go ahead and hit Windows Shift S and that's going to allow us to take a screenshot of our image. So then I can just screenshot it there. I'm going to bring, go back into Onshape here, go up to the top toolbar, just drop down next to the DXF icon and hit Insert Image. Now we're going to have another menu pop up. Go ahead and hit Import. I'm going to find my image. So right here's my image here. That's going to import it into my document. I can go ahead and click on it here. And now it's going to want me to draw a rectangle for my image. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw it, kind of change my shape there, get it positioned how I want, and then now we have our image in here. When you're picking out your logo, you want to keep in mind that the less detail, the better it's going to um, actually cut out on the CNC. Because we're using an eighth inch end mill, the smallest spot that we can get to is an eighth inch. So keep that in mind when you're picking out your logo and when you're drawing your design. So after we have our image in here, we're going to use just numerous of these tools to go ahead and trace our image. So I can use a line here, kind of go around it. If I want to work on getting maybe that smoother curve, I could go with this three-point arc. And just put a point here, point here, and then line this up. So play around with all the different tools to get it looking how you'd like. Um, you can also use spline, which helps to get a lot of different curves. See, so get use all of those different tools, get your image traced out, and then we'll jump to the next step. 
So now that we have our image traced out, we can go ahead and hit the green check mark again. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude our image. So we're going to go back to the extrude tool, click our image. If yours does not highlight like this, it does not let you click it, that means you have an opening somewhere and you need to go back into your sketch to close your shape off. So now I just want to make sure that this extrusion is 0.5 inches and then I can hit the green check mark. So now that I have my logo project all modeled, I need to export it as a step file and bring it into Fusion 360 to create toolpaths for the CNC machine. So I'm going to come down to the bottom left, right click here, click export. This window will pop up, change the format to step, and then you can name it whatever you want. Now go ahead and export. That's going to save, so we're going to go over to Fusion 360 now. Go up to File, Open, Open for my computer, and then find your file. So this mine is logoproject.step. Going to open that up. And now we're in Fusion 360 with our model. So we're going to come up here to the top left, click on Design, go down, click on Manufacture. So now we are in the manufacturing tab where we're going to create our toolpaths. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new setup. So we're going to hit setup. Then we're going to go over to our stock. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either leave it on relative size box and change these numbers to zero. Or you can come over here and go to fixed size box and just make sure you have three inches as the width and 3 inches as the depth and 1.5 inches as the height. Now we need to change our origin. So our origin is where we're going to set our zero on the machine. So um, pretty much for everything you're going to do in the class you're going to want your origin to be here and you're going to want the X to be pointing to the right so towards the right of the machine. The Y will be pointing towards the back of the machine and the Z will be pointing up. And then you want that on that top corner of the stock. So once you have that all set, you can go ahead and hit OK. So now that we have our setup created, we need to create the toolpath, which is actually going to tell the machine what to do and where we want the end mill to go. Um, so for this project, you're going to use 2D Pocket. All of these tabs right here are for other different kinds of toolpaths, which we'll get into some more of these throughout the year, some more advanced stuff. Um, but for right now, we're just going to use 2D Pocket. So we're going to click on that. We're going to select our tool. So go to this Manufacturing Tools Library, which you should have installed. If you don't have installed, go on to Google Classroom and go back to the section on how to install the Fusion 360 Tool Library um, to get that installed. Uh, for this project, you're going to use an eighth inch flat end mill wax slash wood. Let's go ahead and click that. Click Select. Then you just want to check, make sure your speeds and feeds are right. Um, so we got 4,000 RPM for the spindle speed. Cutting feed rate should be 48. Lead in, lead out feed rate 48. Um, plunge, plunge feed rate 20. Ramp feed rate 30. So all that looks good. Go ahead and go to the next tab to geometry. This is where we're going to select what we actually want to cut out. Um, so obviously in this one, I want to cut out this whole area and leave the fish standing. So I'm going to just click on that. Um, if you have some other pockets maybe inside of it or a couple different pockets, make sure you select all the pockets that you want cut. Um, go in the Heights tab. That all should be good. Shouldn't have to click anything there. Go to Passes. You're going to turn off Stock to Leave. And then you want to turn on Multiple Depths. Set your maximum roughing step down to, let's go, 0.08. Uh, and then we can go up to maximum step over. We're going to set that to 0.1. And everything else there should be good. So we'll go to the last tab. You're going to turn off lead in and off, turn lead out off as well. Come down here to the ramp type. We're going to switch this to uh, plunge. Because we're cutting in wood and wax, we can just plunge it. If you're cutting a harder material, such as aluminum or steel, 
you would want to keep this on that helix so that it would helix into the stock. But for now, we can just plunge it. We'll be OK. All right, so now go ahead and click OK. So now that's going to simulate your toolpath. So what you can do is either if you have the, the settings selected, you can look over here. It's going to say it's going to take 16 minutes. Or I can come down here and see at the bottom right, machining time, 16 minutes. So we're looking to be right around, um, I would say, 20 minutes max. And so try and be under 20 minutes. And then you can go ahead and simulate with machine up here. And that's going to help you. And go ahead and slow it down with the slider here so that you can see what it's cutting out. So we can see that it's cutting pretty much everything out except it looks like it's not cutting out the mouth. So why that's going to be is because we're using an eighth inch end mill and that mouth is less than an eighth inch wide. So what I need to do there is I can either get rid of that mouth in the model and it won't have a mouth and then cut the outside or I need to make it at least an eighth inch wide so that that end mill can fit in there because right now it's too small so the end mill can't fit in there so it won't cut it out so you can go back and fix any problems you have with that or keep that in mind when you're modeling that it needs to be at least an eighth inch wide because we're using an eighth inch end mill once you're happy with it say I'm happy with that we're gonna go over here we're gonna come up to this post process you see that G1 G2 click on that under post you're gonna click it and if you already have it here great you're gonna hit um, Haas next generation control if you're using one of the three um, newer Haas CNC mills if you're using the old one you're gonna use Haas pre NGC and if you don't see any of that here go ahead and hit choose from library and then we can go to fusion 360 library and you're gonna see this whole library of them and we're just gonna look in Haas automation find Haas let's find Haas next generation here so next generation control click on that click select and if this is blank if this says choose another location you're just going to click on this three dots here and just click on local and select folder and then you can hit copy to my posts so now that that post is loaded go ahead and make sure you insert your flash drive we're gonna go into uh, built-in right here and let's change our high feed rate to 300 and then you can name it whatever you want under this file name so I'll name it logo project and then once your flash drives inserted you can go ahead and just hit post and it'll post your flash drive obviously right here I don't have flash drive inserted so it's not gonna post um, but after you get it posted you can take it out to the machine follow the video or the step-by-step -step guide to set it set your part up on the machine and cut out your logo project